I wish my mother had aborted me. In 1973, the United States Supreme Court passed down a ruling that would forever change this country. The case was Roe v. Wade, and that one ruling made abortion legal under the 14th Amendment. I wish my mother had aborted me. In 1992, a little less than a year and a half before my birth, the Supreme Court chose to uphold its ruling from less than 20 years before. I wish my mother had aborted me. It's now 2014, and pro-life politicians are passing laws that make it nearly or even impossible for a woman to get an abortion. Forty states have laws that put them in the category of hostile towards abortion rights. Fifty-six percent of women live in those states. I wish my mother had aborted me. Think of the women in your life. Their rights are being infringed upon. You should be angry. Every day we turn on the television and we hear from different news sources about how somebody's rights are being infringed upon. What about this one? You care more about your guns than you do about a woman's right to her own body. You tell me which one is more important. Being the child of an unplanned and very unwanted pregnancy forced me to find out as much as I could about a woman's rights when pregnant. I wish my mother had aborted me. In this video, I will share with you the cases that made abortion legal, why these cases and their rulings make anti-abortion laws unconstitutional, and what we can do as law-abiding abiding citizens to make this country once again a state that respects its citizens' rights. <sighs> abortion is legal. It has been for over 40 years. Anti-abortion laws in place in states are illegal. And states' laws do not supersede federal ones. <sighs> These laws are blatantly disregarding that abortion is legal. In 1969, Norma McCovney discovered she was pregnant with her third child. But under Texas state law, she could only obtain an abortion if the child was the product of rape or incest. So she did what I think any woman in her position would do. She tried to find a route to get an abortion. She tried to make a falsified rape claim, but since there was no rape charges or anything brought to the police, it didn't work. So then she was forced to go down the route of trying to obtain an illegal abortion. But the clinic that she wanted to go to had been taken down by the police. So finally, she was referred to two lawyers. Norma's case went to the Supreme Court of the United States. And they ruled that abortion was legal under the Due Process Clause in the 14th Amendment. Due process means that if a state must respect the rights that are owed to a person. If a woman cannot get an abortion due to state's laws, then that is a direct infringement by the state government on a person's federal right. Fair and simple. According to the Guttmacher Institute, from 1973 to 2011, 53 million legal abortions have occurred. 53 million. Now to some of you watching this video that can be, oh no, 53 million abortions, I must stop this. But to those of us who know and respect the law, see it as someone who was just doing something that the law protected them. Just think about what these women might have had to do. Obtaining an illegal abortion, being forced to go to someone's apartment, to have a clothes hanger used to end their pregnancy. Just think about that. Is that what you would prefer? It's legal. Imagine being Norma or any of these women. They're terrified. And for some of them, they know that they can't do the one thing that they need to do for themselves. Like Norma. 
They're just trying to do something to keep themselves afloat. Not only do we need to respect abortion laws because of the outcome of Roe versus Wade, but we need to stop making this a moral issue when it is simply a legal one. We've all heard the terms pro-life and pro-choice, but these arguments turn the issue of abortion into a moral one. The fact is, the law is the law. In 1982, the Pennsylvania state government passed its Abortion Control Act, which stated that parental consent, spousal notice, a 24-hour wait period, informed consent, and mandatory extra reporting for the clinics had to be done. Ten years later, it was brought to the Supreme Court of the United States, and the court only upheld the parental consent, wait period, and the informed consent clauses, which still reaffirmed the ruling of Roe v. Wade. When I leave my apartment in the morning, I see women and I see my mother who tossed her children aside and lived her life like we didn't exist. Now, she will argue that she didn't do that, but I'm 21 years old and I don't know my mother, even though my mother has been right there my entire life. I see my sister whose son is six years old and one of the most beautiful and brilliant children you could ever meet. He's currently being raised by my 78-year-old diabetic grandmother. My grandmother is 78 years old and retired. Instead of enjoying her golden years, she's giving them up yet again to raise children of someone she raised. When my nephew was first born, I would skip school left and right to stay home and take care of him because my sister wouldn't. He would be left screaming, crying, sitting in his own filth in a diaper for hours because she couldn't be bothered to wake up in the morning to take care of her baby. So I did what anyone who loved a child would do. I took care of him. I loved him. That's what happens when people who shouldn't have children have children. Sometimes people step up to the plate. But I'm a prime example of people who didn't. If my mother and my sister had known that abortion was an option, I can only hope that they may have chosen it. In the whole, in, and in the whole scheme of things, it might have been better. You're sitting by your computer watching this video because your mother chose to give birth to you. Or did she? Are you not really here because your mother could not obtain an abortion? I've explained to you why abortion is legal, but now I will explain what we can do to make equal rights for women a reality. The U.S. federal government needs to make one set of regulations that makes it an equal opportunity for every woman to obtain an abortion. We as citizens can make this possible by letting our government know that we will not tolerate the rights of our citizens being infringed upon. According to the ruling of the Supreme Court of the United States, the highest court in the land, who whenever they make a ruling, it is law. States are required to respect a woman's right to an abortion, not make it an impossible string of red tape. Start with your state government. Let your representatives on that level know that you are serious about this issue. Tell them that the laws in place on your state's charter are unconstitutional, that you care about the woman, women in your state. And then move on to the federal government. You can find out who is representing you in Congress on www.contactingthecongress.org or even Googling who represents me in Congress. It's as simple as that. 
write, call, email your members of Congress and let them know that you care about the female citizens in this country, and they should too. Let them know that them breaking these laws is wrong. Now that you know what to do, what will happen if it works? What will happen if equal rights happen? I was raised by my grandmother. And you know, she would always talk about her life when she was younger. This country used to be a land of opportunity, the country that all others strove to be like. But I don't see that as this country anymore. I see a greedy land of hypocrites and people who don't care about one another. I mean, people used to not have to lock their doors. We would know our neighbors' names, not call them by whatever annoying thing they did. We would reach out, we would help each other, we would be there. That is a country that I want to live in. This plan, this taking a step in the right direction can make us a respectable nation again. On the global level, we have become that guy in the bar that's there every night wearing his high school letterman's jacket, you know, the one that's balding and is clearly an alcoholic and married the varsity cheerleader right out of high school because he knocked her up. And all he's doing is sitting there drinking away his life and talking about that last touchdown of that last game senior year, trying to relive, relive what little shred of dignity he has. That is who the U.S. is. And it's sad. By respecting a woman's right to an abortion, we can not only look like a nation that respects its citizens, but we can finally start building the blocks to be one. I know that I want to live in a nation that prides itself on the way it's run, not the fact that it can and will treat the women in the nation as second-class citizens. I want to be proud to be from this country, not ashamed when I talk to my friends from overseas. This plan can work, and it can bring this country a step closer to the 21st century. We need to fight these anti-abortion laws because they're an injustice to, these women, to the women in this country. Our female citizens aren't being treated as such, and it is our duty to fight for each other. It's how this nation was put together. We can change this country with just a few easy steps. Take a moment and realize that abortion is not a moral issue. It is a legal one, and the law is the law. Contact your representatives on the, both the state and federal levels and tell them that they are breaking the law and you will not stand for it. When I began this, I said that I wished my mother had aborted me. And it's the truth. I wish my mother had been able to do the right thing for her and not had children. I love my nephew and my siblings more than life itself. But because my sister and my mother decided not to be parents, I was forced to become one at 14, and my grandmother was forced to become one in her golden years, again and again. Children being born doesn't always just affect the people that made the child. So I will end this the way I, the way I began. I wish my mother had aborted me. Thank you.